Hey guys, what's up? These are the top 10 mistakes that you must avoid when you start your Shopify dropshipping business in 2022. If you make just one of the mistakes in today's video, this can really slow down your Shopify dropshipping business from being successful. Now for each mistake, I'm gonna be giving you actionable steps that you can take to avoid these mistakes. Now, once this video hits 3000 likes, I'm gonna be giving you guys a completely free Google Doc sheet that has all the checklists that you need to follow so you can get off to the best start in 2022 and you avoid all the mistakes on today's video. The first mistake that you guys must to avoid at all costs is taking shortcuts and not spending enough time learning the dropshipping game and also testing it. I literally see new people joining the industry and spending just a few days learning dropshipping and then they go and run loads of Facebook ads, they spend lots of money with the influencer marketing and they end up losing all of their money. Now, if you don't spend enough time to learn how the dropshipping fundamentals work like customer psychology, how to advertise to customers, how to make a converting website, how to keep customers within your business for long periods of time to stay profitable then you're literally setting yourself up to fail and you're shooting in a dark room. I always say to people, you want to spend at least one to one and a half months learning dropshipping. And the good news for you guys is I've got a brand new free Shopify dropshipping eight hour course coming out on the 1st of January. And the great thing about January to February is that's the most quietest time in e-commerce, which gives you guys enough time to learn the game. But it's not just about watching these videos and learning from them. You also need to go out there and actually use the knowledge and test it. It doesn't mean go out there and spend money. You could literally make websites for free on Shopify. You could literally go out to influencers for free and reach out to them. So you can do a lot of these things for completely free and test what you're learning. I understand that a lot of you guys are going to be excited about making money with your online business, but you need to make, understand that patience and learning is more important than just going straight into it. Now, the second biggest mistake that I can see a lot of people making is they're not going to be trying enough marketing platforms when testing their products. They're only going to be relying on Facebook ads and Instagram influencers. Let's say that you're selling a furniture product and you're only using Facebook ads and Instagram influencers to try and find potential customers. Let's say you get no sales, you spend 200 to $300 and you're fed up and you think the product's dead and dropshipping doesn't work. But let's say that your potential target market isn't on Facebook ads and they're not on Instagram influencers. Let's say they're on Google ads, TikTok ads or YouTube ads. So that's why you must try these other different marketing platforms. You don't know if your target market is actually on that platform that you're currently trying. So that's why it's so important to make sure that you use every platform platform to advertise your product on to find which one works the best and where your market actually is. The third mistake that I can see people making is they're not going to be getting their own custom content made for their website photos and for their advertising materials. Now, I always say that UGC content, which stands for user generated content, will work the best for the next one to two years. This is based on customer psychology behavior and we're finding that UGC content relates better to people on these social media platforms. So these old school videos that you typically make for your Facebook ads and your website photos, they're not going to work anymore. You want to make sure that all your content is custom content. And the reason why is because if you're going to go on Facebook ads and use somebody else's content, but put your logo over there, then if that content has already been blacklisted by Facebook or any other marketing platform, then guess what? You're immediately going to get your ad account banned. To avoid this, just get custom content made and get some UGC content made. And you can get this done on a website called Bilo. Now, the fourth biggest mistake that I can see a lot of you guys making is not thinking outside the box and following what everybody else does. So for example, finding what everybody else is selling. So whatever winning products are currently out there, you're just going to go out there and test them. Now there's nothing wrong with that, but are you going to test them the same way these other guys are testing them? Whether it be with the same videos, whether it be with the same product descriptions, whatever it may be. Now thinking outside the box, let's say I take a product that's done really well on Facebook ads before. What about me partnering with an influencer? And this is something that I've talked about before, which is where I actually collaborate with influencers influencers, whether it be on Instagram, YouTube, TikTok. And I say, let's do a brand partnership deal where you keep 60% of the profit. I keep 40% of the profit and I basically do everything for you. All I need you to do is promote the product the way I recommend you do it. By me doing that, I don't really need to spend much money on advertising. Also, I already have some really warm audience, which is the influencers audience that I can already sell to. And I can do something like an email blast to them. So this is something that not many people think about doing when they start dropshipping. They just think about, Facebook ads, Google ads. If I use influencer marketing, I'll just pay them to do it. But if you do a collaboration with them like that, then that's thinking outside the box. So the fifth mistake that you must avoid, and this is so crucial, is you must start investing into private label stores and white label stores. Now, if you don't know what this means, it basically means where you take a product from AliExpress or Alibaba and you put your logo on the product and on the packaging. You need to try and avoid sticking with the traditional way of drop shipping. As soon as you've got 30 to 50 orders with that product that you're testing, 
testing, then please go move to Bulk Buy and Fulfillments 3PL, which stands for Third Party Logistics, because that way it's going to speed up your shipping times. You've got control over the quality of the product and people will start receiving your product with your private label on there, which will increase your customer lifetime value, which is when people basically spend more money on your store over a year period and even more than that. And this is where people see the most success based on customer lifetime value. Now, getting just one customer to your website and then if they never come back again, that's really bad because businesses fail because they're not able to keep acquisition from one original customer. By private labeling, you're going to have that brand identity, you're going to have faster shipping times and you're going to have better quality products. Now, the sixth biggest mistake that you must avoid and this is where you're going to make most of your money with dropshipping and e-commerce is selling your store at its peak time. Now, what a lot of people do is they get really attached to their store because they private labeled the product, they've invested a lot of money into their product, but as soon as your store is at its peak performance and you know that you can't really scale any more than this, then you should think about selling your website on whether it be Exchange Marketplace or any other place because as soon as your store lasts in terms of its high performance, eventually it will slow down and then the actual high price that you could sell it for will dramatically decrease. For example, if I sell my store at its peak performance, I could potentially get $100,000 for it, but if I sell it just after that, then I might only get $50,000 for it. Let me give you a true story based on this mistake. Now, I have a really good friend from the UK that found a really successful dropshipping product. He private labeled it. He ordered it in bulk. He spent a lot of money on it, on the creatives and everything like that. Now, his dropshipping store hit its peak this year in August. And I did say to him, look, man, I would consider selling it. And he said, look, Cam, I don't really want to sell it right now. I'm in love with it. I can see big vision for this store. And I said to him, listen, if you private label a dropshipping store, yes, you do have your unique preference. But at the end of the day, it's the same product that somebody else could private label anyway. So unless you're making your own unique products, then realistically, your longevity with these stores won't really last. So do sell it at its peak performance. Now, when you private label your store, that's when you're going to actually get the most money for your store because it's a private labeled product. Because he was so in love with his store because he spent so much time and so much money on it, he didn't want to sell it. But now that store that could have been sold for $300,000 can only be sold for $125,000. Now, the seventh mistake that you must avoid is having really bad negotiation skills. Now, when it comes to dropshipping and e-commerce, the key is negotiation. Now, you need to learn how to negotiate when it comes to product pricing. So when you go to your supplier, you need to learn how to negotiate with them. So let's say you want to avoid AliExpress, which I do recommend avoiding AliExpress, and you want to go with a company like CJ or Wio. Let's say AliExpress is selling at $3 cheaper than CJ or Wio. Then you need to say to CJ, well, look, I can find this product $2 cheaper with AliExpress. Then you do a price match with them, saving yourself an extra $2 on that product. Another example of this is when you're working with Instagram influencers. Let's say they're trying to say that they're worth $300, but you know that they're probably worth around about $200. Then you could say, look, I will give you $200. They might counter back and say $250. You've saved yourself $50. Negotiation skills are extremely important throughout your dropshipping journey in loads of different aspects. So you need to really get good at this skill. Eighth mistake that you must master, and if you don't master it, it's going to really damage your business. And it really hurt me when I started, which is mastering how to pay your taxes. Now, I'm not going to be giving you guys any financial advice or any legal advice because I'm not a certified accountant. And depending on what country you're from, what state you are, the taxes change. But you've got to really learn how to do your taxes from the get-go. For example, with myself, when I started out, I didn't really focus on my taxes. And I just thought, oh, I'll sort that out when it comes. And after a year's time, when I went to go see an accountant, they said, look, you've made a mess of it. And you're going to have to pay a really big tax bill this year. And next year, we can sort it out. But then the first year, because you've made such a mess of it, you're going to actually have to pay a really big tax bill. Now, to avoid this issue, speak to an accountant before and make sure you've got some good softwares in place like TaxJar and Be Profit to make sure that you know what you're doing when you start out. And if you think you're not going to make a lot of money, you don't know what's going to happen. You could make some seriously good money in your first year, your second year. So make sure that you get yourself off to a good start. The ninth mistake, and this is something that really holds a lot of you guys back from making life-changing money like six figures and seven figures, is not taking enough risk. Now, of course, you want to take calculated risks, but you also don't want to be comfy. A lot of people like to play the game very comfy and they don't like to get uncomfortable to see bigger success. And by taking more risk, that is not being comfortable, but it might enlarge on you to make more money. An example of this could be you buying in bulk instead of drop shipping and private labeling. Now, you might need to pay your supplier this time five to $10,000 upfront, and you might be scared of doing that because you don't know if that bulk ordering will sell out and you don't 
want to be sitting on stock. If you don't take that risk, then you can't level up to the next stage. And there's different stages to e-commerce and you have to take a certain amount of risk to get to that next step of the process to becoming a very successful e-commerce entrepreneur. I always say to people, if you're not learning something new or if you're not being challenged on a weekly or monthly basis, it's because you're not taking enough risk. And the 10th mistake is the most deadly mistake and no one talks about this, which is mental health. Now, throughout your journey, you're going to suffer from certain mental health issues, whether it be doubting yourself, be feeling like you're a failure, whether it be your friends and family telling you you can't do it, but you're going to face a lot of different mental health issues. You might lose out on a lot of money and it might make you very sad. So you've got to really prepare yourself mentally to understand that these things are going to happen and you best be prepared for it because if you're not prepared for it and it all hits you at once, you're going to be in the gutter and you're not going to want to get out. And this can really damage people. And I've seen it happen to a lot of different people around me. So guys, please, I'm asking you, take some time out of your weekly basis and spend some time focusing on your mental health and making sure that you're in a good place. Because if you're not, you're going to get burnt out and your momentum is going to go from here to here. And sometimes you might not even be able to get it back. Now, those are the top 10 mistakes that you must avoid in Shopify dropshipping in 2022 if you want to see success. Now, if you want to get access to that to-do checklist, make sure we hit 3,000 likes. And I wish every single one of you a happy Christmas and a happy new year. And I'll be catching you guys in the next video.